my dear elegant ladies, there are things that you should not be wearing on a date with a man. Why? Because he will be turned off, he might be stereotyping you, he might get the wrong impression of you, and then nothing ever happens beyond that date. Don't make these mistakes. Here are the 10 things you should not be wearing. Let's start with item number one. Number one is all about no boob fest, please. And I'm serious, you don't want to appear there as if you're ready to breastfeed him because ladies, truly, when you're showing absolutely everything on display like that, the man is simply gonna be staring into your boobs all night. It's like he's gonna be having a conversation with you and your boobs. And what's gonna happen? Well, as this is the only thing he sees throughout the date, he's gonna be just thinking sex, 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 sex on repeat, and that's not the direction where you want to go. This is not strategic if you are looking for a serious committed relationship, if you don't want your man to only see you as a piece of meat or sex on legs. I do believe a little sneak peek is fine, so you can have a little bit of something something going on. You don't have to be, you know, like this all night, but you definitely should not be doing this whole, you know, when you can go there swimming in your cleavage because it's so deep. No, ladies, zip it up just a little bit at least. Number two, don't dress too creatively or too complicated. Ladies, men are very simple creatures and less is more when you communicate with them. I do understand that we all have personalities and we all have different styles in fashion. Some are flamboyant ladies, some are very creative ladies, and some are true fashionistas. However, I don't want you to wear your most complicated and super cool outfits on the first dates. I understand you want to show a little bit of your personality, that's fine. I'm not saying that you cannot wear these type of clothes, but this runaway fashion, leave it to when you are with your girlfriends. That's the ones who gets impressed by these things, not the man. The man wants to see something more simple, something more feminine, something more classic, and not something where he feels like he's part of Project Runaway or something like that. If you think you're going to impress him with your super trendy, fashionable looks, you're wrong. If you agree with me, leave a comment below. Number three. Now some of you are gonna get so offended by me saying this, so trigger warning. But ladies, if you are somebody who has a Michael Kors bag, coach bag, guest bag, or any other brands that are not considered really cool, then I wouldn't wear a bag like that to a date, especially if you are with an affluent man. Because obviously, affluent men, they're gonna see that you know, Michael Kors bag, and they're gonna be label you as the Michael Kors girl. Meaning that if that day comes when he will actually treat you to some shopping, maybe buy you a nice gift, etc., he's gonna be having in his mind that, ah, oh, you know, she's just this basic Michael Kors girl. I don't need to take her to Chanel or to Hermes. She probably doesn't even understand those things. You know what I'm saying? And this is why it is so important as a woman not to label yourself that way. Listen, I get it. You might be in the beginning of your level up journey, so you might not afford anything fancier than that. And I'm not throwing shade at you for that. Not at all. I've been there myself as well. But when you are setting the impression with an affluent man, you do not want to label yourself as the Michael Kors girl or the girl who wears coach, you know, because there are going to be repercussions after that. You want to come across as the woman who is of high quality, dresses expensive, has expensive taste, etc. You don't have to put a bunch of labels on display, not at all, but just dress high quality. He doesn't need to know the brands. There might even be a brand behind. Just Make sure you hide all those labels that we are a little bit ashamed of because those type of labels simply don't really exist in high society. Number four, don't wear the platform stiletto heel on a date. Why? Well, guess why? Because ladies, you are being vulgar if you wear a shoe like that. Now first things first, always wear heels if you go out on a date in the evening. Also, I would also add a little bit of heel if you also meet during the day for a nice elegant lunch as an example. But of course not if you're gonna go for a long walk somewhere, etc. Anyway, but the heels has to be reasonable. Don't put on the platform. By the way, who wears platform these days? It's not even in fashion anymore, but some do actually. So I need to really warn you ladies, throw them away as of right now. Okay, definitely wear heels that are a little bit sensual, that feels a little bit teasing, 
but nothing too provocative, nothing that makes it feel like you are in a strip club. I mean, no offense to strip clubs, but obviously the man will have certain associations with that. So for this reason, ladies, it's so important that you try to keep your heels under 11 centimeters for a date, okay? And if this is a daytime occasion, maybe maximum eight centimeter. Number five, how could I not put the short bodycon dress on today's list? And ladies, it's simply for the reason that unfortunately this became the signature dress of the really desperate woman who craves all attention to her because she's that thirsty and that desperate to have a man and is ready to beg on the floor, oh please give me a man. Remember what I said? We are not desperate on this channel. We do not need to beg for any man out there. Men will come to you when they see that you don't need to beg anyone to be with you. So ladies, you don't have to scream for attention. You don't. I'm not telling you now to dress so conservatively like a nun. No. And let me actually point that out because I should have put that on my list, but I actually didn't. I don't think it's appropriate on a date to come in your most conservative clothing. There are elegant clothes that are a bit too conservative and also a bit of a turn off when you are dating. When you are on a date, you want to show your silhouette you want to look feminine, you want to have flattering fabrics, you want to have flattering cuts, a flattering fit, you definitely want to show off that you are a woman, but you don't want to give everything away because you're not a cheap date. If he wants to see more, well, he has to work for it. Nothing in this life is for free. But ladies, I think what we all have in common is that it's so incredibly important to look expensive, especially on a date, because you will get better treatment this way as a woman, rather than if you dress cheaply. So for this reason, I have a free cheat sheet waiting for you called How to Look Expensive, where I actually share with you my best tips and practices. So make sure you go to classycheatsheet.com and download this free cheat sheet, because guess what? It's free. Point number six. This one is really important to discuss. And again, leave your thoughts in the comments below because one of the things that sometimes we forget when we are dressing ourselves so that we look expensive is that we might overdo it. Meaning that we put on all our diamonds, we put on our beautiful fur, we wear our most expensive garments and you know, everything has to be so extravagant to the point that actually you kind of look overdressed and a bit like a diva and a bit like you're trying too hard. And this is a big mistake, especially if you are dating in the early stages, because first of all, you don't want him to think that you are trying hard to impress him. No, you also don't want to come across as somebody who is so high maintenance like you are diva. And please watch me what I say because I do think it's important to signal to the man pretty much instantly that you are a different caliber of a woman, that you have expensive taste, that you enjoy a certain lifestyle and that you have certain boundaries in life. But being kind of overly high maintenance, nobody likes that type of person. And men are, of course, in today's uh, society, very afraid of high maintenance women. So be careful how you come across then. But this doesn't mean you shouldn't dress like a woman who has expensive taste, a certain mindset, etc. Try to differentiate those two. What I'm referring to being overdressed and kind of too much of a diva, that is when you're taking it a bit too far. Always underdress just a little bit, just so that the man doesn't think that you are too bothered to impress him. Number seven, ladies, no masculine clothing or baggy clothing. I told you already today that we want to strive for a feminine approach because that's really what sells it to the man. And in this case, it's so important to avoid all the masculine cuts, all the masculine trends and any form of masculine clothing because that's not going to impress the man or turn him on unless men turn him on. You know what I'm saying? And nothing wrong with that, by the way. All these trends that are qualified a little bit like man repeller trends, stay away. Maybe introduce them later in the relationship when you have already hooked the guy so he cannot escape. <laughs> no, but really, I think that you really need to focus again on the feminine cuts. It's all about femininity in the dating stages. Don't be tricked by society by thinking that those baggy pants are gonna do you a service when you are there trying to make it work with the opposite sex. Number eight, avoid any heavy makeup. Now, if you don't believe me, Fine, why don't you go out there and ask men, 
what they think of women who come with a lot of makeup on a date. And don't tell me, I didn't tell you. Too much eye makeup, you know, this clumpy mascara, this thick, heavy layers of foundation, that strong lipstick and those really long eyelashes that are gonna poke him in the eye. Trust me, a man is going to be scared, ladies, when he sees you because he's also gonna be worrying and thinking throughout the date, I wonder how she looks without all of that. And you know, no man will want to buy the pig in the sack. So he might be thinking to himself that, I don't know, maybe I should pull out right now while I can. <laughs> but ladies, it's not just about that. It's also about the fact that having all those layers of makeup, it's not going to make you look your best, first of all. It's gonna look a little bit unhygienic, to tell you the truth. I mean, especially when you come up close, somebody with that heavy makeup. I'm sure you've seen some of your friends have that. Up close, it's never that nice. And lastly, imagine you go and you hug him. <laughs> and haven't it happened to all of us that we, you know, we, we look at his shirt, all of a sudden, half of our face is on his shirt. So of course, you're running the risk higher when you wear so much makeup because easily, it can just rub off absolutely everywhere. And that's gonna be a very awkward situation, so stay away. Point number nine, men don't like shoulder pads and guess why? Well, first of all, let me tell you one thing is that we do still have the trend of, you know, dresses and tops with shoulder pads. I think Alexandre Wautier does them specifically. So what happens is that these shoulder pads, they make a woman more masculine. They widen the shoulders, they make the shoulders kind of more dominant like that. And the worst is if a woman with already dominant shoulders wears something like that, she looks so masculine masculine that she shoots herself in the foot. But to be honest with you, I would say every woman would shoot herself in the foot by wearing shoulder pads with a man because it just adds masculinity. And again, going back to kind of the fashionista style, you know, maybe you would impress your girlfriends with that type of look, but I don't think a man is going to find those shoulder pads sexy. So that's something I would really stay away from on a date. Point number 10, last but not least, fake tan. I don't know of any man who enjoys an orange woman. Do you? Let me know in the comments below. Ladies, the thing with the fake tan is that even though we live in 2021, still, fake tan still is a bit orange, regardless of how high quality product you buy it. And the problem is also pretty much all self tans on the market, they do rub off. I mean, have you never seen your sheets? I mean, imagine if you go home with a man after X amount of time has of course passed and you feel comfortable now being a little bit intimate and then the morning after. When you look at the battlefield, those sheets look like a crime scene. You don't want to do that and the man is gonna be freaked out. It's gonna be so awkward. So stay away from the self tan. It's really not that important. Trust me, your skin color is beautiful just the way it is. You don't have to go down the orange route. So in my next video, 10 things elegant ladies never wear in summer, you have to watch that video because there I will be giving you those items that we unfortunately see so much in summer that I hope after this video we will no longer have to see them ever again because they're that unattractive. I will see you in that video.